Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Nate Moore. I'm a member of the applications team here at Melco. And uh, this morning, I just wanted to go through a few of the things that surprise my coworkers when I uh, work in design shop in front of them and they're like, how did how did you do that? How is how are you doing the things that you're doing or things that as I watched Scott or Samantha, I'm like, that's really cool. I don't think I knew you could do that or I didn't remember you could do that. I should do that more often. Um, a lot of them are things that have been covered before in other videos or in the manuals. But as I am looking at kind of readdressing some of the stuff in the manuals, uh, it's going back through and saying, okay, making sure that I call the things what they really are so that we can always find them when we're looking for information on them, such as uh, the toolbars. Um, so let's uh, get me set up so I can respond if you chat in and ask questions. Perfect. Um, one more thing. Mute me before I start making really loud noises. Um, but actually, Hopefully everybody can hear me. It looks, I've got to have it on mute, but it looks like everything's going out. So let's change back over. Linda, hi. Uh, Linda was prepping me this morning, making sure I was ready to go for what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so again, this is kind of uh, things that you didn't know uh, you could do or didn't know would be helpful or didn't know you needed to know about design shop. Um, so the first thing uh, we were kind of all working together uh, the other day and we were talking about, you know, what are these things called? Uh, so the first one was this bar up here, the bar that changes. If you, if you open a design, it has information on that design. If you have something selected, what what happens up there kind of changes and it's very dynamic and and what is this thing and it is the property bar and how do i know that and what happens if it goes away well if you right click in the blank area of one of those kind of toolbar areas it has check boxes by what is there and if something goes away let's say the property bar how do i get that back well, I can right click on it and I can put a check mark by it, but that's also how I know what it's called and how to look up what it does in uh, the manuals. So, um, so that was one of the things that we had talked about. Uh, one of the things that I really like to do with Design Shop, which is why I don't share computers well, only child, um, I like to really customize my workspace. So if you look at and we're currently on my home computer, not my work computer. Um, if you look at my design shop, it may look a little different than what you're used to. And that's because I customize my mini palette. Uh, I, I make it look like I want it to look. I have keyboard shortcuts. I have different defaults. I have all of these things set to how I like to work. Um, and I, I really strongly encourage uh, you to, to set yourself up and, and, and get your environment working better for you. Uh, so for example, if I start a new um, document, I, I like uh, a darker gray. So um, this is just kind of a medium, a, a light medium gray that works well for me. Um, if you want something a little bit darker, you can always go ahead and change that background color if you right click here. And if you don't like your thread colors, you can scroll down to the system RGB and mix your own. So you can make things a little bit darker. You can make it match whatever you're working on. Um, just me with the way that, that my eyes work and, and all of that, um, I like a little bit less light on me. So I'm really struggling with this light up here, but you just need to see me. So. Um, you can change that. Uh, you can change your default color. Uh, it's it's set up to uh, default as a blue. I like digitizing in this pink. So if you right click on here, you can change that. You can select whatever you want. You can use just this hot pink or whatever you want. Customize it to your 
preferences and then if you if you right click on any of these icons uh, or not icons little color swatches you can set them to whatever you want them to be and they don't even have to all be the same thread chart so I can have uh, eyes accord in one spot or uh, Madeira in a different spot and you can customize that and if I hit apply you'll see that it changed no it's definitely not what I want so I'm gonna go um, 1801 for me and hit apply and then once you get that all situated if you want um, you can save it as the default or if you if you have certain um, palettes that you like to use or or sets of colors that you're using um, I used to do this when I had different universities that I was working with and they had very specific colors um, I would save it as a custom palette and once I get that palette set up then I could load that custom palette and I could go choose a different one and load it and now this is going to be the same because that's what that one was called um, but then it will load the different background it will load over here on the left and it will load a, a different um, kind of def uh, not defaults but defaults for this project um, for that custom palette so you can again customize what you're doing for either the job or how you like to work and I'm sorry we got a new uh, coffee maker this last uh, two three weeks ago um, so if I'm speaking a little fast, just let me know. I've had a few this morning. They're delicious. All right. Uh, other things you can do. You can move these around so you can dock them. If you, if you click on this little vertical handle right here, um, it looks different in different operating systems. You can move them. You can dock them. Um, if they go away, you can double click to bring them back. Um, if they go away completely by clicking on the X, we know that right clicking in this blank area and I can't do that right now. Um, right clicking in that area and putting a check mark back by the one that was missing and then you can just drag this back up and dock it where you want it to be. You can stack them around. You can do the same thing with the project view. Um, I tend to work on one screen because I usually have Illustrator, email, whatever up on my other monitor. Um, if it's on the weekend and I'm chilling, it may even be Netflix up on the other monitor. Don't judge. I'm digitizing here. Um, you can have your uh, project view on another monitor. That's how uh, Scott tends to work, and he doesn't work well on one monitor. He likes two. Um, but if this, if you want this to go back, just double click, snap it back into place. Uh, other things that you can do that really help get things. Uh, situated for you is set up your accelerator keys and I know we've talked about this before um, but they're really helpful um, don't be like me and get so dependent on them that if you go to another computer you can't remember how to work if they're not set up that way um, kind of bad about that but if you go to tools and accelerator editor um, you can set up your own essentially hotkeys so uh, things that I do all the time. Um, previous insert tool, I have that set up to the space bar. So if I'm using a walk tool, so I'm digitizing along, I hit enter, and then I want to use a column tool, I use column two. Scott uses column one. Again, it's up to you. Digitize along. This is crazy. Uh, put my stitch directions in. I hit enter. I'm still on column two, but if I want to travel again, that column one was no. That walk stitch was the last thing that I used. If I hit spacebar, so I'm going to press spacebar on my keyboard, and it just swapped back over to the walk tool. So I don't have to go back up and select them again. You can set up each individual input tool as its own hotkey. So I used to have like one, two, three, four set up as, as different things, and that comes from when I was transitioning from EDS3. Um, that's in the Wayback Machine, and we don't need to worry about that. But you can set it up, again, however you want. Um, one question. 
I've set the origin to be the first stitch in the file, but it's not using that as the start point when I set the laser placement. Is there anything special? Set the origin. Set up, set up the origin to be the first stitch on the file, but it's not using that as the start point when I set the laser placement. Um, let's take a look. So I don't typically do that. I typically move my design this way. Um, I think what you're talking about is, and I gotta think about where this is. Um, oh, that's another way to switch tools. Again, things you don't even think about. Uh, if you right click in a blank area, you can swap tools that way as well. Um, and there are hotkeys for a lot of these. Uh, control shift plus a number. I need almost two hands to do that and taking it off. No, I'm so I set things up for single ones. Um, so uh, for me, I have trim set up to a T. Um, Scott has that set up for something else. And so whenever I'm on one of the co uh, computers he uses, I'll go to do something and then very, very different things happen. Um, is that under project? I don't remember where that is. I am sorry. Tools, options. Um, I will have to look into that. I am sorry. I will get back with you, Kelsey. Um, I will try to find an answer to that and get back with you because I'm not entirely sure. Nor do I remember right now where that is because it's something I do so very infrequently. Um, but when I tend to set things up, I will move. If I'm doing laser alignment and I want that, origin to be where that laser starts um, I'll move the design around the origin um, so that's what I do uh, but I will I will look at that um, and see if I can find another way to make things work or break them because that's fun um, okay so we talked about accelerator keys oh other things that I do um, converting objects to wireframe uh, you can right click uh, go to operations convert to wireframe, uh, but you see here I have a couple uh, of my own. And that's what's really nice. If you set up your own in the accelerator editor, um, they will show up to the right, just like the ones that are hard coded with the software. Um, so I have convert object to wireframe set up to E. I don't remember why I did that specific key. Um, but it had to do with something I was doing when I was editing an alphabet. Um, and I have split element set to an S. Um, both of those are really, really handy. And I can just one click and it's great. Um, what's not great, if you have things set up for just a single key and it's just a letter, if you are editing lettering and you think you're inside this box and you're not, you're accidentally outside and I go to type something and I hit E, I just converted all of my lettering to wireframe um, because that's what I have that stroke set up to do so uh, watch that one and make sure you're doing what you think you're doing um, fortunately undo is really handy for that perfect Kelsey's all set um awesome what else can I mess up for you guys because that's fun um, we talked a little bit about saving uh, defaults as far as colors other things that I set up defaults for, and I typically do this in a new window. I'll, I'll try things in properties. Um, notice how much my right click menu changes depending on if I'm on something that is selected or not. <laughs> Curtis, um, he's talking about the view and the grid. Yeah, you guys don't want to see my defaults for that, but I'll show them to you anyway. Um, uh, let's get back to properties. I can't look at two things at once, apparently. Um, wherever you right click, it's going to change very much. If I'm on something that's selected, it's one thing. If I'm off in a blank area, it's bringing up a lot of tools. Um, but if I go to properties, I would set up what I like. Um, but if I go into, so I can test them out that way. But if I go to a new, um, window and I go view properties, I can look at properties for lots and lots and lots of different things. So let's say for lettering, I wanted, um, I wanted something a little bit more condensed. 
Um, I could do that and uh, apply that. And then the other thing that I can do is I can save permanently, and that will change my defaults for not just this file. So you, or you could do that. You could save it per project, which is handy, document, project, whatever. Um, or you could save them permanently. Uh, once you do that, if I close Design Shop and open it up, or I go to a different um, project, uh, you can see that my default, instead of being block two, is now condensed. And so I can fit a few more things um, into my lettering elements or lettering segments. So um, yeah, you can set up those properties to work better for you. Um, the ones that are in the software now, they're kind of a hybrid of Scott, and me, and a little bit of Samantha, and a little bit of Mike Doe, all kind of sprinkled in. Josh is in there too. Um, Everybody's kind of sprinkled in and mixed up, but that also means that none of us have design shop defaults exactly the way that we want them when we load our software. Um, so I go back in and I tweak things just the way that I like them uh, so that I can work a little bit faster. Now, Curtis was talking about um, the grid. If I right click on either the grid or the origin, um, and he's commenting in on, on Facebook because I've got it up on another screen. Um, if I right click on either the grid or the origin, uh, I can change, oh, Smarto, that's what you were talking about. He was telling me where this was. Yes, um, I'm also gonna talk about changing stuff. Um, you can right click, or you can click on it, not right click, right click's on a different area, uh, and change um, the color of things so if you are, a little bit more comfortable with the way things are in a different program, you can start to make them match. Um, so I can hit OK and apply. Uh, what is wrong? Enter a number between one and no, I don't want to. Good. Wow. I don't know what I don't have open. It really doesn't like it. Fine. Um, Let's do one that I do a lot. Uh, the other thing that I do, and you can tell it's in inches, so that's crazy. Let's go to tools, options, and uh, measurement units. Here you can change how things are displayed. Um, I run a mix of metric and imperial. Um, what is really weird for me and you're probably not going to like this i tend to run my grid in millimeters and what's really crazy is if you look right here uh you can see and if i turn this on you can see it a little bit better um i've got uh one millimeter and then i have 10 subdivisions so if i turn this on and i zoom in that is really really tiny stuff um part of the reason i do this uh, is the machine, this is kind of gridded out in the machine movements. And so I can go view and snap to grid. So when I'm working on tiny, tiny areas, I can have this snap and you can see that it doesn't exactly go where my mouse is, but where it's lining up on that grid, I can line up to machine movements. So view, snap to grid mode is on um, that works whether the grid is visible or not now occasionally i will do something silly and i will say um let's go every inch and let's have these be quarter of an inch subdivisions and so now if I, if I show that grid, I'm too zoomed in to see it, but you can see the light gray, and maybe you can't on that screen. Let's lighten that background up so you can see it a little bit better. I could have also changed the grid line's color, but now you can see this is set up to an inch um, on the darker and a quarter of an inch on the lighter. And this is something I would do if I was placing things above the origin by a quarter of an inch because I was going to use laser alignment above the top of a pocket. I could then 
get out of my tool. Uh, I could move my lettering and it's going to snap to that and I've, it makes things a little bit easier. What's really bad is when I turn this off and then I start digitizing and all of a sudden my digitizing tools are just going crazy and not at all where I think they should go. And it's because snap to grid is still on and my grid is set really, really big. Um, so if you find that your digitizing tools are not going where you think they should, do two things. Check this. If you really do want this, make sure that your grid is set to something that is small enough to give you some kind of resolution that would work well for you. And whether it's on or off, it doesn't matter. Snap to grid will still work. So keep that in mind. Now I'm going to leave this and probably tomorrow I'm going to come back and not remember that I did this to myself. Um, and my nephews will get an education in four letter words if they're within earshot. Um, okay. Other things. Uh, we were talking about snap to grid. It was right on the tip of my brain. Um, hey Janice. Um, Sam does a lot of the stuff in a very similar way that I do. That's kind of fun and scary. Um, okay. We talked about snap to grid. We talked about the grid size. Moving. Oh, uh, moving things. This is something else that I tend to do. If you're just dragging and you want things to line up, um, holding alt snaps it to either horizontal or vertical. If you just want to nudge it a little bit, um, these are things like, not the greatest with my control on the mouth sometime, mouse sometimes. Um, this might be part of the problem. A little bit too much caffeine, a little bit too shaky. Um, if you hold shift, you can use the arrow keys and move one point at a time in any direction you want. Shift and Alt moves 10 points or one millimeter. Shift and Control moves a centimeter at a time. So those all um, are handy ways to go that way as well. All right, we've talked about saving uh, palettes. We've talked about saving defaults. One thing we didn't talk about um, that came up last week, um, was the ability to go in and apply styles so you can apply styles to things um you also can create a style so if i wanted i could create my own style and i could go in and say you know what i really prefer whatever i really prefer and then for my underlay i like different ranges so maybe i'd take this down to 40 and then i would do i would do a double zigzag and then i like to fills crisscrossing each other um so negative 45 and 45 just because i really don't want to do the math and the density is a little bit tight so i'm going to lighten that up but once you get that done then you could go apply my style to whatever you have selected or the project or the defaults you know apply it to the project and now you can see automatically that i have a very different uh, underlay going on i now have that double zigzag instead of what was defaulted in the software um so what's nice about this is if you get somebody else's design <laughs> which is why we were talking about it um uh, Samantha said the styles are uh, working great for quickly fixing her old files, which is what brought up this conversation. Um, she had files that um, I don't remember were before we did something with tie stitches. I don't remember what. Um, and now she's just applying styles to her old files and all the new properties are getting applied very, very quickly and easily and nicely. And apparently that's working well, which is awesome. Um, so these are just a few kind of pointers for, uh, quickly doing things that I do all the time. Um, one last thing that I do all the time, uh, before I let you guys go for the day is, uh, I use change element type and combine and subtract elements all the time. I've talked about it before, but it, it looks like magic. Um, so I want to make sure that you guys know how to do that. Um, if I have something selected 
You can use the change element from one type to another. That's this tool over here. So it is lettering. I can change it to a complex fill and I can either add or replace it. Um, I'm going to, right now I'm going to add it. Um, normally I would replace it, but I decided I wanted undo. I wanted to have two pieces. Um, so here we've got this nice fill. Um, the other thing that you could do is you can select all those, change element type. Let's do a single line and let's add that. Let's make it a different color. So you can add borders very quickly. Um, the other thing is I'm going over here and I'm clicking and I do a lot of that when I am demonstrating. Um, but when I'm digitizing, it's actually pretty rare for me to do that. What I typically will do is just hold control and click on what I want it to be and that will activate that change element type as well. So control and click on either a fill or a single line, whatever you want it to become, uh, replaces, shift, adds. Um, so I use keyboard shortcuts all the time, all the time, all the time, um, just to, to speed things up. Um, and then the other thing we were dealing with, I think, I think Samantha covered this in one of her earlier. Um, <laughs> I've been using Illustrator too much. I just tried bring to front, which isn't a thing here. Um, here we go. So uh, one thing we were talking about was kind of subtracting elements. Um, so if I have one and select another, I can come up here and subtract them. And you can see, you can kind of see, uh, that it punched out from underneath. Now, one tricky thing that you didn't see happen is I have a, let's change the color so you can see it a little bit better. I have a good deal of overlap. And the way you get that is by right clicking on that tool. So right click on a tool a lot of times gets you, um, Properties. I should not read comments as I'm trying to do this because I can't do it and keep the straight face. Um, so uh, one application for styles is as you learn more and learn what your preferences are, you can go back to the files from before you knew what you were doing. Not what I'm saying. <laughs> it's coming from other people. Um, and then apply these newer, more learned approaches to embroidery to your old files very quickly. Um, right clicking on a tool sets up the defaults for that tool. Um, and that, that works with your digitizing tools as well. So if you wanna change for a little bit that I'm gonna be digitizing a bunch of uh, basting stitches, I'm gonna set that up to 40 points, hit okay. And then as I digitize with this tool, it's 40 point walks and then let's right click on it and let's change that back to 15, which is not something I would normally do, but it's going to show. Now everything is teeny tiny stitches, 15 point versus 40 point. It will just continue to go forward until you right click and change it again, or you go into a new project and it gets those uh, defaults back. Hopefully that gets you a little bit more to look at today. I know we've covered a lot of these things in different videos in the past, um, but uh, they were things that kept surprising other people or I was surprised by. Um, so it's a nice little refresher and kind of just little bits of good to know all gathered in one video. So uh, thank you. Uh, if you have questions for the Friday Q&A, be sure to chat them in and um, Samantha will curate and find them all. And uh, same thing, you can email applications at melco.com. Uh, with your questions and we will get those answered in a Q&A session or um, if it's kind of a big enough topic we may choose that for one of these live sessions on a Wednesday where we go through the whole thing uh, from top to bottom. So thank you all for joining. Um, it's really nice to see you all online. Um, I will see you again sometime soon and uh, stay safe out there.